I know you gonna dig this. Get, get, fu- get funky with me. What's going on everybody? How are you doing today? Welcome to beautiful Asheville, North Carolina in the Blue Ridge Mountains. Asheville is a funky little town. I'm outside of a funky little house owned by Odell. Shout out to Odell. I have not met Odell, but I was told Odell lives there. And Odell apparently was a friend of Harry Anderson, who lived at one point on this street. And I'm here with my friend Rayan from Nerd Locations. Happening. He's been in a few videos with me before. You're a native of North Carolina. I am. You are. You were about two hours from Charlotte. Yep. And not that much taller than me, but we're standing. I'm standing down. Oh, well, yeah. A little bit. So, we're doing a video today on Harry Anderson. Right. Beloved judge from Night Court. That noise keeps going. <laughs> so, every time we try to start, let's walk down a little bit. Now, Getting to this, we're going to go to two locations for this video because to figure out the exact house where Harry Anderson sadly passed away in 2018 was not easy. As you've seen, Rain, what I went through. I did. For this, because there's two addresses listed for Harry Anderson in Asheville, North Carolina. Now, he lived, of course, in Hollywood, born in Rhode Island. Then, of course, California, he was where his career took off. And then moved to New Orleans, then Asheville, North Carolina. Now, there are, like I said, there are two houses listed. Through property records, I was able to determine which two houses. And then I was in the impression for a while that it was this this house that we're going to show you first. This house that we're going to is not the house he passed away in. And a lot of it's, it says that in a lot of articles, but it's not. So I'm going to show you this house where he did live right up close until his he sadly passed away and we're going to talk about harry anderson remember him and uh show you some things let's go so Ray, what do you remember about harry anderson of course night court right but doing research for the video uh, i didn't know this but he was a master magician and he was the guy if everybody remembers the mass magician where mm-hmm. the guy would tell people how magic tricks was done apparently harry was so offended by that he did his own show where he told who the masked magician was right <laughs> he told on him but my favorite thing he ever did and this is probably going to be shock some people was the 1990 uh stephen king movie it yeah that he was, was richie on, he was richie and it and he was also in tales from the crypt so those right. are my two favorite things and according to the your f- new friend that you spoke to odell junkyard was his best friend on the block yeah so, yeah they were close so they were close in the, uh, after he passed away he made a harry anderson rest in peace sign somewhere here yeah he had quite a uh, quite a career he started we were reading together he was doing magic at the age of like 15 16 on the streets yeah, of yeah, chicago he, st louis uh yeah he was a street magician in san francisco chicago st louis new orleans LA like talk about somebody who's kind of born to do what they're doing like yeah. he must have loved magic for an early age and said there's no other career for me this is what I'm doing master magician and and uh just he was at the uh big time at the improv right uh I think he was big in the comedy circuit we were talking about some of the Rosie O'Donnell yeah. Richard Jenny like his contemporaries would be at the early 80s mid 80s comics you know and probably at the tail end of Belzer uh Pryor all that 
but all those comedians who hung out in Hollywood, Sam Kinnis, Sam, oh, you know, he would he would have known all of them. Jay Leno, you know, this is all back in the mid to early mid eighties. He was big in the eighties. Yeah, a lot of people today, the kids today, and I say that because I'm a little older, but they don't remember that era and they don't no. remember those comedians. But Harry Anderson was at the top of the list of those guys. Right, and also because basically we had three channels. Yeah. <laughs> we had ABC, NBC, and CBS, and NBC Night Court. I mean. Everybody watched Night Court. And there's a reboot, and I think the reboot was is because how strong the original was right. because of Harry Anderson. Yeah, yeah. Let's go take a look at the house right now. We're just still saying here. We're talking about a few things, because I was telling you, he was on Saturday Night Live. He did appearances for like the 6th, 7th, 8th, ninth season, then he hosted, and right. that led to his role on Cheers, where he played Harry the Hat. So he had a recurring role on Cheers. And um, he was also... Part of a mini night court reunion on 30 Rock. But did you watch 30 Rock? A little bit. Yeah, I, yeah. I liked it. Great show. And of course, he had Dave's World, where he played Dave Barry. And he was a guest, I believe he was a guest at one point on Hearts of Fire, which starred his old uh, co host, co star, Marky Post. Right. Right? That was her show with John Ritter, Hearts of Fire, wasn't it? Yeah. So he played the Dave Barry character, I believe. But Dave Barry was a famous uh, syndicated columnist and. They made a show out of it. He's one, he's one of those guys, if you look up his credentials, you're like, I had no idea yeah. he was in that much stuff. Right. But the 30 Rock thing blew my mind. I, I totally forgot that episode. So as we're walking through the neighborhood here, these houses are beautiful. Right, Rain? Yeah, these are historic Asheville homes, probably 100 plus years old each. Right. And they've all been redone and remodeled and way out of my budget. Yeah, and as we were driving through, I mean, it's it's set, like spring right now, but so many different colors. Still have a lot of fall colors. Yeah. So we're, you know, up in the mountains, so we're not totally out of winter yet. Right. So as we keep walking, you see the beautiful, beautiful houses. They all have that sort of, you know what they remind me of? They remind me of uh, Pasadena houses. This does, yeah, this is, does kind of have a Pasadena vibe. What, what are they called in the crafts? You know the houses I'm talking about. Yeah. It has a Pasadena vibe to it. But let's stop right here. And that was Harry Anderson's house. So right there. Now, this house he lived in when they moved from New Orleans. Uh, it was after Hurricane Katrina. Yep. He had a nightclub in New Orleans, a comedy right. club. Yeah. And then when it wasn't, uh, there was something with the rebuild. Yeah, right? I, yeah, there were some problems with the rebuild, and I think he kind of gave up on it and moved here. Yeah, he got frustrated by it. So they moved here. So this is the house he was living in, but this is not where he passed away. Now, apparently, if we walk around here, this is what I've heard from people in the area, right? Rayan, we'll just right. say it like that. I don't want to give, I don't want to put anybody on blast, but I've heard that there's some house beside it where they built an ADU, which is a, a another dwelling, like a secondary dwelling on the property, and it encroached on his property, and there was nothing he could do about it, and that's why they wanted, that's why he moved a few blocks away. Now, I don't see any houses here with something secondary, so it could be something in the backyard. We can see some structure right there, right there beside the house, and even on this side, we saw something. It's hard to tell. That's only something we've heard. So it could be... Could be folklore. Right. Or it could be exact truth. But right. I mean, I got it from a pretty good source that I think, that seemed to know a lot. But a guy like Harry, you got to imagine, wouldn't want a bunch of small mini houses being built on his property. Right. You know. And it's a, it's a nice big house. It's, once again, as I'm walking through the neighborhood, it's like people think celebrities, huge celebrity homes, mansions, gated walls, but no, it's a, it's a regular neighborhood right here where Harry Anderson lived. Beautiful house, and check out the mailbox. That's pretty quirky. Yeah, that's cool. All right, so now we're gonna walk. Well, we'll take a drive over, because I think it's about a four minute, and show you the house where sadly Harry Anderson did pass away in 2018, but that's was formerly Harry Anderson's house here in Asheville before he moved to another one. So we're leaving the neighborhood. Let's go to the next one, but let's take a look at some of these houses. So colorful. And Lots of stuff going on everywhere. And a lot of people walking dogs. Rain, you told me it was a very liberal, a very very dog-loving 
<laughs> I, on the way up, I told you you're gonna. People love their dogs and they love flowers here. Every house yeah. has a great flower bed, and everybody has a dog that they love like their. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's walking a dog. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> and again, just uh, this gentleman sells a lot of stuff. Apparently, is what I've been told, and kind of looks. It's, it's odd out here in the middle of these streets with all this stuff in the front yard. But apparently, Harry Hansen was buddies with the guy that lived here. There's supposed to be a tribute to Harry around somewhere. Yeah, I don't know where it is. But yeah, it's pretty cool. Wow. I don't see it anywhere. Harry Anderson tribute. But there's lots of weird stuff. <laughs> you don't see this every day. I'm even looking at it. No, I'm not looking through the lens. I'm looking just with my eyes. It's the lens is not capturing it as much. The, the chaos that's here. This is pure chaos. <laughs> Look at the birdhouse right in the middle. Yard art. This yard art. It's kind of yard art. Asheville yard art. Yeah. <laughs> Rayan on the show Night Court, Judge Harry was a fan of Mel Torme. And in real life, Harry Anderson was a fan of Mel Torme. And it was coincidental, totally yeah. coincidental. And uh, that was kind of a happy surprise for Harry. Yeah, the, and, the creator made the, the judge a fan of Mel Torme, and Harry Anderson happened to be a fan. Yeah. And he gave a eulogy at his funeral. It's crazy. So we're outside the house right here. Uh, in January of 2018, and I should say it's about a three minute drive. Oh, see, I think that's the same guy making the same, <laughs> with that noise. Come on, with the trees, leave them. Uh, in January 2018, he had uh, suffered from the flu and then brought on a series of strokes. And then in April, April 16th, 2018, again, about the flu, then he suffered a stroke, uh, the flu and heart disease, but suffered a stroke in his sleep and died in his sleep. His wife made the call from this house and uh, she discovered him. He was DOA, sadly. So he was already, he passed away here in the house, of course, to take him to the hospital. He was cremated, so there's no grave to visit. I'm gonna take a look at the house. His wife does not live here anymore. I've done the check, there's somebody else living here. Um, but yeah, this is the house where Harry Anderson passed away. Let's go take a look. So there's the house right there, it's the red one. That's where Harry Anderson passed away. And we'll just take a couple of quick looks at it. It's a nice, big, beautiful house. Looks somewhat empty actually, doesn't it? Yeah, it doesn't look like anyone's living there. It's hard to tell. Lights are on, on the side of the house, but it looks like it's empty. And you can see, Nice view, unobstructed, beautiful little area. So you're a big fan of Night Court, right? Everybody in the 80s that right? watched TV was a fan, right? yeah, big time. And we should say that actually people do live in the house now because they just came out. Yeah, somebody and, came out and got their Amazon package. And they waved to us, gave us a nice smile, and that's the house. So I, uh, yeah, really sweet people in this area. And just like, it's a beautiful house beautiful house and so close to the other house right right he harry must have liked this area of Asheville. Because yeah we're literally maybe two miles from yeah you know this area house. i don't know You're yeah downtown right yeah. so it's close we're, for everybody watching we're we might be two miles from downtown and this this area is it's beautiful all yeah. all all the homes here are immaculate right because the other a gentleman we talked to on the other street where his performer house was said he still saw harry in the area a yeah. lot yeah he saw harry around what else do we know about harry i think we said it all i mean night court was what made him famous but he was a working magician he did 
so much. He wrote books about magic. He he toured. He did a show with Chris Angel. Yeah, I think in the late '80s, he put out a he published a book with a friend of his about like scams, gags, and cons. Right. And, uh, but him being the guy that uncovered the mass magician was probably my favorite little tidbit about yeah. Harry. Yeah. Because he took it so personal that somebody would go out and expose magicians because Harry was a street magician from from early teenage well, it's an art I mean it's yeah. not it's you know whether or not you believe in magic I don't think mo you know we we know most tricks can be debunked but I mean it's an art form to be able to do it yeah is incredible 100 percent. and Harry Anderson was known as one of the best he was a magician comedian but you don't you know that's that's two things that are very difficult to pull off yeah no he was pretty proficient and this is the house this is the house Sadly, Harry Anderson passed away April 16th, 2018. I think a lot of people, if people watch this video, which I always hope, I never know if people are going to watch the video. I hope. I think a lot of people will see the thumbnail or the title and be like, they didn't know Harry Anderson died. You know, it was, it was, it was, a, it was big news, but, you know, people forget pretty fast. Yeah, he kind of went off the radar a little bit after no, that. No, sure, sure, yeah. He was living his best life, you yeah, know? He actually said that. He actually said a quote, something, somebody said, um, why don't you do more? Something to that effect. He, oh, my Lord, that noise. <laughs> and he said, I've got more money than Davy Crockett. Whatever that means. He goes, I don't need to, I don't need to do anything I don't want to do. Yeah, and he, he was a guy that basically downplayed being in a sitcom he talked about how it wasn't hard work and it was right. easy life and he, he was very blessed and fortunate and I think he just kind of wanted to live out the rest of his life where he wanted to live I've read uh, different things you can never trust uh, like the celebrity in uh, net worth sites but you know I, I said that shit to my I read one where he's worth 5 million one where he's worth 10 million either way both of them that's enough to live the rest of your life pretty comfortably 5 to 10 million but um, he owned quite a bit of property so who knows in total but yeah he moved up to Asheville and I mean I think the houses here they're not I think he paid 500,000 for that other one on Flint which for a big house like that seems like a deal yeah today that same house would be a million dollars right right just like seven years later yeah that's how much yeah all right so that was the story of Harry Anderson Night Court and uh, rest in peace to Marky Post his co-star on Night Court and the uh, Selma, I can't remember the name, the older lady on the show, she's passed away. But a lot of other people on Night Court are still alive. John Larroquette, um, Marshall, Marshall Warburton, Warburton. Yeah, he is. Marshall Warburton, Richard Mall, who played Bull, they're all still around. But um, And Marsha should be in the reboot. Right. In my opinion. She, yeah. she was. They should have brought a couple of characters back other than Dan Fielding. But, you know, I haven't seen it. Have you seen it? Is it good? I've watched a couple of episodes. Good? Missing Marsha though. She, yeah. she was a great. What was she? The bailiff. Yeah, she's the bailiff. Yeah, yeah, uh, she, yeah. she was fantastic. All right. Recipes, Harry Anson. Thanks, Rain. Peace. Out.